Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and we're going to continue discussing box plots by analyzing and interpreting them. Make sure that you have your notes, pause the video when necessary so that you can stay caught up. Okay, now that we know how to make a box plot, why do we even use them? Is it to see the individual data? No, the box plot doesn't show individual data, does it? Instead, it shows us the spread of the data. So when we use the box plots, we're just concerned with how the data is spread out. Remember, a measure of spread is a single number that describes how spread out or clustered together the data is. One measure of spread that we have already learned about is the range. And the range is the difference between the largest and the smallest numbers in a data set. Okay, so we're going to identify the range for e each set of data and compare. This is what we call a double box plot, where there are two sets of data that we're wanting to compare their spreads. Okay, these are dancers' ages. There's two different groups, group A and group B. We want to find the range for each. So range is just simply high minus low. So the highest number for group A is 26, because this is the maximum value, and the minimum value is 17. So to find the range, we subtract the two, and the range is nine years. For group A, there's a range of a nine-year age difference. Now we're going to do the same thing for group B. The high, which is the maximum value, come on down to the number line, it's at 29, and the minimum value is at 18. And we want to subtract the two to find the range, and we get 11. So the range in ages for group B would be 11 years. Okay, so let's compare the two. The range for group B is larger than the range for group A. That means the data is a little bit more spread out. Another measure of spread is the interquartile range, also known as the IQR. And this is the difference between quartile three and quartile one. So basically, it's the range of the box area. So here we have our dancers' ages again. Let's find the IQR for each. Again, it's the box area, so we find the highest value of the box area, which is at 24 for group A, and we're gonna subtract the lowest box value, which is at 20. So the IQR, or the spread of the box, is four years for group A. What does this mean? This means that the middle 50% of the ages only has a variability of four years. Let's look at group B. The highest value of our box of the IQR is 26. Subtract the lowest, which is the left side. And let's see here. That looks to be about 21 and a half. So if we subtract the two, we get four and a half. So the IQR, or the spread of the middle part of the data, the middle 50%, is 4.5 years. So there's a little bit more variability in group B with the ages than in group A for the center of our data. Remember that box plots separates the data into four equal parts. Even though the parts may differ in length or their spread, each contains 25% of the data. Okay. So look at this box plot. From the minimum value to our quartile one, and let me write that in, from the minimum to Q1, this represents 25% of our data. From Q1 to Q2, which is the median, represents 25% of the data. From Q2 to Q3 is another 25% of the data. And from Q3 to the maximum represents 25% as well. Okay, so even though from Q3 to the maximum, it looks like it may be the longest portion, you would think that there would be more data pieces. There's not. Remember, this isn't talking about individual data pieces. This is talking about the spread. So this upper 25% is spread out over more numbers. There's more variability. 
So if the length of a whisker or the box is short, what does this tell you about the values of the data in that part? It means the data is more concentrated in that area. It has less variability. Look right here, from Q1 to Q2. It's a very small box, isn't it? It's not spread out. It's not very long. It's shorter. So that means there's not a lot of variability. But if the length of the whisker of the box is long, it what does it tell us? It tells us that the data is less concentrated. It has more variability. So let me see if I can put this another way just to make sure everybody understands. Each represents 25%. Okay, so it's the same amount of, of data. So let's say I have five pieces of data. I'm just gonna put X's to represent data. Okay, so my data can be really close together over here. There's three, four, five, or my data can be spread out. One, two, three, four, five. They each still have only five pieces of data. It's just the concentration. Are they really close together? The values really close together, or are they really spread apart? That's what this is telling us. 